How about a little heel turn? <laughs> <laughs> John Cena, you know the name, and he was WWE's franchise player for a tremendous amount of time. In the last four decades, there are only really four men, undoubtedly, that were pitched as the face of WWE to the masses. Those four men include Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and John Cena. In a way, Cena was truly WWE's last true megastar, the last guy who had the entire show built all the way around them the one who made all of the money for a lot of other people in the business, and that person probably was John Cena. He might be widely loved by the WWE fan base across different demographics and at this point different generations, but make no mistake about it, it was far from being a widespread acceptance during his run as the face of the company between 2005 and say 2015. Just like how you had a vocal minority booing Roman Reigns loudly at all the major events during 2015 to 2018, you had an entire portion of the audience doing the same thing for John Cena, who was pitched as the biggest good guy, who appealed to women and children, but maybe sometimes the fellas weren't on board. It led to the infamous Let's Go Cena, Cena Sucks chants from the crowd. <laughs> dividing them into two different camps. They were either with John or against him, proving how polarizing he was, but certainly not leaving crowds quiet wherever he performed. To keep it short, the reason why fans began to turn on Cena as early as 05 and 06 when he was positioned as a top tier player was that his character seemed a little bit stale. It was a little bit too goody two shoes for people's liking, especially coming out of the gritty attitude hardcore fan times of the late 90s and early 2000s. He was the definition of a corporate pro wrestler. Not to say that that was a bad thing. Have you ever seen a movie or a show where the main character is just so good, so perfect, so flawless that it might be perceived as annoying? That was Cena to most male fans or most people that were in the Cena sucks crowd. It wasn't so much as about doubting Cena's in-ring ability as much as it was about maybe that segment of the audience wanting to see a different, darker side of him. Cena came into WWE when he was still a thugonomic bad boy rapper, but evolved into Super Cena, and they weren't having that. Maybe they wanted Super Villain Cena, but believe it or not, it almost happened. Just for context, it's important to remember why WWE valued John Cena as a good guy so much. He was a superhero to children, the target demographic of WWE post-2008 when they went for more of a PG-provoked product. They needed a clean-cut good guy who could do all of the media and carry the company on their shoulders, and he did that. He was the biggest merchandise mover of that era by a significant distance. He sold the tickets, he main evented the shows, he was the draw. In an interview with In the Envelope, the actor's podcast, Cena revealed that even as far back as 2009, he was told that a heel turn was never going to be in the cards for his character. The sponsor-friendly good guy who peeled in so much money from young viewers was simply too valuable for WWE to make that change. And why should they? Business told them not to. But a couple of years later, things had changed. Speaking to Chris Van Vliet, Cena revealed that at one point internally in WWE, there was indeed a plan for him to become a bad guy for two of those infamous, famous, very profitable matches against The Rock in their once-in-a-lifetime storyline. John Cena, the villain in a WrestleMania main event? It could have happened. After hearing the rumblings that WWE officials were finally going to pull the trigger on a serious character change they said they would never do, Cena took 48 hours to have a new theme song recorded. He even had seven new low-cut singlets crafted in boxing-style robes with old wrestling boots that were gathering dust. He was ready for a new character, a new presentation. Just imagine John Cena and that kind of attire being a guy you would boo. And even the kids who cheered him would boo him now. 
So what finally happened? As you know, WWE didn't go through it. Despite Cena being ready to go, there was a harsh reality to deal with. All those make-a-wishes that he was granting for children, he wouldn't do them anymore. He wouldn't be able to connect with the audience like that in such a special way. The millions of dollars he made for WWE in merchandise sales. All that merchandise may not have moved the same way, especially when it didn't have a good guy on it. All those media appearances, they would be reduced quite a bit. WWE's high brass were more keen to make John Cena the Babe Ruth of WWE. They couldn't picture him as a bad guy. And it's a shame it turned out the way it was because we have two concrete examples of such situations before and after this time that has proved it may have worked. Hulk Hogan was the wrestling superstar. Heck, he's one of John Cena's biggest inspirations. And in 1996, his red and yellow act was getting a little bit weak with the advent of more attitude in pop culture and attitude in pro wrestling. And as he was the main attraction in WCW, he needed to keep it fresh with the new guys that were coming in, the outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, who recently defected from WWE and now were invading WCW, and they formed the NWO. Hogan turning as a bad guy sucked the air out of the arena. It is one of the defining moments of WCW and truly is something that revitalized Hulk Hogan's career and projected it to new heights during the most successful time across the entire wrestling business, making him a hell of a lot more money in the process. An even more recent example, Roman Reigns. In 2020, during the stresses of the pandemic, Roman Reigns vacated a WWE World Championship and a main event match with Goldberg at a WrestleMania that wouldn't air in front of any fans and was concerned about his health. But this time away from the WWE helped him realize truly he needed to do something different. And when, he, and when he agreed to come back to action, he wasn't gonna come back as the big dog. He was gonna come back as something completely different. And that's how he got the tribal chief. That's how he got Paul Heyman as his wise man. That's how he got the bloodline. That's how he got the longest reigning WWE world champion in modern history. We would not get the Roman Reigns we have today. We would not get the WrestleMania main events we're getting now if that didn't happen and if WWE didn't fulfill Roman Reigns' requests to go bad. It really is a shame that we never got to see that darker, evil side of Cena because it could arguably have led to another glory period for WWE rather than one of highs and lows that we saw throughout the Ruthless Aggression era. It wasn't that Cena wasn't capable of it, he was. He's been called the greatest of all time for a reason, and that wasn't a good enough reason for WWE to make the change. It will always remain WWE's biggest what-if question. What do you think could have happened if John Cena became a bad guy and turned heel? Let us know. Give us your fantasy booking in the comments below. Thank you for watching Sports Key to Wrestling, and check out other videos just like these.